Forsley, opposed to the one that you have a great interest in, since your leadership on this subject in California way back when. Yes. And uh, now we are talking about uh, how we can enhance our draft proposal, which deals with this problem, to meet and to take advantage of the input of Congress on, on this. Uh, there are some discrepancies between the proposal that HHS has advanced in terms of making the enforcement more effective, uh, both for the AFDC and non-AFDC, and the discussions that we had here. Uh, one of the issues, Mr. President, is this question of uh, the sharing of an incentive bonus pool. And we have the opportunity to create a ratio to allow uh, the bonuses to be paid equally for the collection of non-AFDC uh, enforcement decrees as well as AFDC. In our uh, draft and under our discussions, we considered a different shift, giving, tilting it in favor of AFDC, all children, whether they're from welfare families or from other families, because we're still talking about children's benefits. Mm -hmm. So uh, Mark Rockman was talking about the need to have both uh, equally distributed. Yes, it's, it, we see it as an essential. Uh, in any legislation that comes out that the uh, benefits, the benefits that have been decreed by either a court or through administrative edict at the state level, this does not in any way interfere or prejudice state divorce laws or state actions. It only triggers, the federal government's role only triggers after there has been action taken at the state level under their laws with regard to child support. But the growing number of defaults has been alarming, and it's not only among those who are uh, at the bottom of the economic ladder. It's growing in all income levels, and uh, children are really the innocent victims here. Um, Ed, I think you were making a statement. Well, uh, what we're doing now, we're talking about providing funding to state enforcement agencies right. to do the collection. I have yes. a yes. yes, that's correct. I mean, I, but the point I was making yes, was we want to be sure that we're not creating a new federal crime. Well, we have a problem there. Let me, let me uh, although Peggy had not finished her presentation, yeah. but yeah, I, I think I do want to create a new federal crime. <laughs> to this extent. I think we have to sit down here while two waves of photographers come out of the table. <laughs> this way. Come on in. Hi, oh, Max. So, How are you, sir? Thank you. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Hang on up there. Well, since you're the, you're the chief exhibit today, why don't you take George's chair there? Well, all right. <laughs> I don't want to do that. So it's like I have to run the Senate in a second. Right. Sorry, you kept you Ah, <laughs> covered. <laughs> Shirley told me she caught you. My inclination on thinking about that story, just forget about it. Agreement there. I said he got the case, but the other side had one substantive story, and the overall class was deemed. The firing has got real life to it. Weep over well, one. We got through the end of about it. We should have forgotten it. You know, it's a cheap little thing. You know what's given to you? You ever notice a lot of times that you keep going back to the same thing as always? It's just like uh, yeah, it used books. to be Dave Kahn. <laughs> One time when I was Good old at the University of Chicago, we had some big arguments about study books. And of course, the library, they you know, had a big new library, and that was really terribly expensive. So I had one of these operations research type students undertake a study in the library and he went through and he found out that something like 55% of the books in the library had never been taken out by <laughs> And then a big another batch had been taken out a lot for a year and then never again. Obviously some professor has signed it as the last. So start remotely. And they'll be just as useful for the time. You're going to have a smaller building and get all the active books in there. That went over like a lead balloon. I figured it the same yeah. idea as this tie. I figured it would, yeah. yeah. I'm trying to remember what one of the schools it was in California. There's some problem about moving the library. And all of a sudden, the kids set up a bucket brigade 
literally, and moved. I moved it back to the books and threw my arm for passing along. Well President, are you going to approve the Madrid Conference Pact compromise? Uh, no question, Helen. But this is uh, we haven't started the meeting yet. Why? You haven't made up your mind. We don't have any answers yet. Thank you. I haven't heard the question. Thank you. You're right, please. <coughs> question and answer story. The question is, I mean the answer is Eddie Nelson. You know what the question is? How does Nelson Eddie put his name in the phone book? Very <laughs> 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 happy, even better when <laughs> yeah, happy Bastille Day. For us French Americans, it is a very important day. And nobody's told you that in the White House this no, morning, I'm sure. For heaven's sakes, no. Well, happy Bastille Day. Well, come in. Oh, Pete. Vice President, how are you? Got home in time to cast just a nifty vote oh, yeah. yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> they were just congratulating me on my first time out of the shoot. Vice presidents and lieutenant governors get to cast those votes. Oh, oh boy, that's just no fun. <laughs> <laughs> Thank Thank you. You. Hey, Mike. Excuse me. Oh, You mean your staff didn't tell you that uh, today was Bastille Day? No, no I don't know about Bastille Day. This is the first day of summer. You know, for us ethnic Americans, uh, national holidays like that are really important. <laughs> Come on, Tom. Viva Come on, Tom. Good day to France is in as much, <laughs> in as much trouble today as, uh, as it was in best, on that real Bastille Day. I've, I've got an article by, speaking of that, by Bastiat. Resources of the International Monetary Fund. And I understand that some of you have some your minds made up on this, and some of you are looking for more information. The Senate, as we know, has passed both the authorization and the appropriations for the IMF. And we think that it's absolutely essential that this legislation be enacted now to ensure uh, against further instability in international financial markets, which could, I think, uh, hurt our own economic recovery. The leaders of the other industrialized nations, and I agree with Williamsburg, on a comprehensive strategy for dealing with the international economic and debt problems. And the IMF quota is pivotal to that strategy. And we emphasize to all of our partners down there, our colleagues, and to and met with good warm reception that we were going to work our heads off uh, to get this through. It can't work effectively without these additional resources and they must be in place before the end of the year. We all have an important stake, I think, in the means of a stable world economy because uh, we are, it is all interdependent now and we're leading, our country is leading the world in this recovery and it'll fail all over the world if we don't continue. So I need your support on this legislation, <coughs> and I'm counting on Republicans to make sure that it pass, and there's Don. Very <laughs> good ask Don to speak more to this subject now. Well, take the chair. I thank you, and I, uh, I know you've got some things.
things on your mind about yes, sir. foreign affairs and so forth? Yes, sir. I won't uh, go into uh, propounding my qualifications. I have some. Uh, so I'm not speaking to you. One item of business will be taken care of before we get underway in the cabinet meeting, and that is the signing of this executive order today. It's a symbol of the commitment of this administration to do everything it can to keep alive the American dream for all of our citizens. And this is a, an executive order that has to do with more federal uh, involvement in federal contracts for minority-owned businesses. Now, while our program for minority business development is important, it's by no means the most important of our efforts to promote this American dream for all our citizens. But beginning in the late 60s, on the very heels of the breakdown of legal racial barriers, the economy entered a period of contraction. And what it amounted to was that just when they achieved the rights to buy a ticket on the train, the economic train that they'd seen going by got on the train and started going backward. So uh, this has been a problem. The actions taken and the proposals that have been made by this administration are designed to get the train moving again. And the signs are clear now that our program is working. And in addition, because of the progress of the 1960s and this administration's firm commitment to protect the human rights and the economic freedom of all Americans, the passenger list is going to look a little different when the train starts rolling ahead this time. So without any further ado, I am delighted to sign this executive order. Where's Wendell? There. We've been through an election. Yes, you have. Good to see you on this side of the Atlantic this time. Nice to see you. You finished your travel? Right? Finished. Recovered. Yes, sir. Thanks. Say, that is something, too. You try to tell a funny story. You want to search for it. You wonder. That's how it's coming out. You had some trouble. You know, that you're doing in the French. Know that you had a number of meetings and you discuss some very important topics. Thank you. I assume that everything is being talked about. <laughs> 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 